All right, welcome to uh, this lecture. We're going to be looking at um, a different, a few different topics in this one. Um, and I'm going to approach this lecture a little bit different. What we're going to do is talk about some case studies. So I want you to imagine that you're you know, a doctor or a nurse or something and that you, you've got this patient in front of you. And we're going to look at some symptoms and we'll look at some lab results and then make some conclusions. So let's start off with this patient, number one, Brad Anther. His history is that he's a 38-year-old factory worker. He presented in the emergency room and he had this, you know, it was, it was hard for him to breathe. He had a fever of 100 degrees and he had these severely swollen lymph nodes, right? So within three hours of admittance, though, in the hospital, Brad began to lose consciousness. He slipped into a coma. 30 minutes post-coma, the patient expired. So, you know, very quickly kind of passed away. The patient history then was taken from the wife and revealed that Brad worked in a wool processing plant Four days prior to this, he would compl started to complain of fatigue and aches and general flu-like symptoms, that, 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 and also with a cough that didn't, didn't help him, you know, he wasn't able to cough anything up, and a low fever, okay? So but that's Brad's history. Now, um, some lab results were, were carried out, and the lab results showed that his lymph nodes contains lots of dead tissue that was likely killed by a protein toxin. Um, and there was also a pathogen that was found, and this is a picture of the pathogen over here. The pathogen's outer coating did respond to gram stain, um, um, to a gram stain test, and we'll look at that a little bit later. What that actually means. So it was therefore classified as a gram positive. Um, figure two shows a, a diagram of of this pathogen, and you can see this pathogen, it's a, you know, kind of cartoon sketch over here. Um, it appears, right, to have this kind of cell wall, uh, a cellular, cellular membrane on the inside, and it looked like there was, a, you know, DNA in the middle, and that in addition to DNA, there were like these ribosomes that were floating around also in, in the inside of, of this structure. Um, when the autopsy was done, it all, there also were, um, appeared to be these dehydrated forms of the pathogen that have very... Uh, a distinct morphology than the, than the other pathogen that we saw above. Um, and so these are all clumped kind of together and they were found attached to hairs in the nasal passageway. So let's, um, let's take note then of the pathogen itself. It contains DNA, has a cell membrane, has a cell wall. What would this suggest? Well, it suggests that it is a type of cell. Right? These are some of the you know, minimum components that we need to have in order to say that is, that is alive, that's a living cell. It also has kind of a longer um, shape, we call that a rod um, typed shape, a rod shaped uh, pathogen. And you know, it probably entered his body somehow when he was working in the wool factory, maybe breathed it in. And it only took a few days from the time of exposure until the um, you know, it actually killed uh, this patient in, the, in this case. Okay, so let's look at patient number two, Nikki Menendez. So this is a 12-year-old child presented in the emergency room with really high fever, 104 and a half, and this rash on her back. So look over here, you can see kind of an example of what that rash probably looked like. In addition, she complained of headaches, stiff neck, and vomiting, um, and these symptoms came on suddenly and had only been present for about 12 hours. Um, and, but previous to this, Nikki had just gotten over a cold and uh, with like severe congestion. So Nikki had been sick about a week prior to this. A spinal tap was done to remove cerebral uh, spinal fluid, which showed the presence of a spherical pathogen. So now let's take a look at this, this pathogen over here. So it's kind of spherical and appears to be in like these chain structures. The pathogen did not respond to gram stain, so when it was trying to be stained by this process that we'll talk about in just a second, it didn't get stained and so it was considered to be gram negative. Um, when, when they looked in and took a closer look at the pathogen, this, here's a diagram of what some of the things that they saw. They saw a polysaccharide capsule on the outside, then a cell wall, cell membrane, um, an area that um, is called the cytoplasm and then lo lo lots of uh, there were DNA and then also lots of ribosomes. The pathogen appeared to be toxic and was causing widespread damage and inflammation of the tissues around the brain and the spinal cord. So we should note about this pathogen is that it contains DNA, it has a cell membrane, has a cell wall, has this this capsule on the outside, has ribosomes on the inside. 
All of this, once again, would suggest that this pathogen is a living organism that's, that's um, it's a cell and it's on, on the inside of, uh, of this host. Um, note, though, that instead of being rod-shaped, it's circular-shaped and probably gained entrance to the body um, during that week when the immune system and everything, when, that, when, she, was, when she had that cold um, a week previously. So it looks like it's taken about a week for, for time for the severe symptoms to, to, come, to come about. So let's stop right here and think, okay, what types of pathogens are we looking at here? So you should recall that this is a living organism, has a cell, has DNA, has ribosomes. What is it? Well, this is a bacteria, right? So if you, if you thought of that, you were correct. The, and bacteria can come in different shapes. They can be spherical, rod-shaped, or spiral. They can also come um, aggregated together in clusters or in chains. And you, 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 know, you may look at some of these words that are out to the side here and go, that looks familiar, like strepto. So, you know, when, when you talk about a streptobacteria, then it's a, a bacteria that's in chains. And you've probably heard, you know, she's got a staph infection, or does she have strep throat? That's where these types of things come from. Because of the bacteria that are involved in those infections, that's the type of aggregation that they have. And over here we can see the different pictures of a, of a spherical or a rod-shaped or a spiral bacteria. Now, I hope you realize that bacteria contain ribosomes. So what is a ribosome? These are these, these organelles that are actually able to read the genetic message and, and, and produce proteins, right? And all bacteria can contain ribosomes. It's essentially the only organelle that they have are these ribosomes. And then you've got the DNA just kind of loosely inside of the cytoplasm of the cell. But there's no nucleus, you know, there's no Golgi apparatus, there's no, you know, uh, none of these other organelles that we see in animal and plant cells. So bacteria then can cause symptoms. Um, they can secrete toxins and when they do this it's called an exotoxin for example cholera is, is of this type or they can as part of their structure especially that outer shell um, that can be toxic as well and an example of this is salmonella so when we looked at the two different bacteria remember one of them had simply just the plasma membrane and then this kind of cell wall and the other one had the plasma membrane a cell wall, but then an outer, um, you know, capsule uh, layer, this layer that kind of protected it all. And this is where the staining comes into play. If you stain immediately, then all of the gram-positive bacteria immediately are going to get stained because they don't have that extra outer membrane to, to protect the cell from being stained. And so you get this dark purple staining pattern. Well, then you can um, uh, rinse off the, the purple and you can then add a pink dye and when you rinse it off you also then take away this outer membrane because uh, you use like ethanol or some type of alcohol and then when you add the pink dye now it does stain the, uh, the outer layers and so you get this pink stain and so you can very easily go oh, okay we have gram positive bacteria and gram negative bacteria in, in kind of the pink color so what were the diseases then that these uh, two patients had. And this is, you know, what a health care, health care professional has to deal with. Works with the, the history, the patient's history, what they can see, the symptoms. They also do get lab results and eventually they diagnose. Brad had anthrax. I'm sure you heard of this. This is Bacillus anthracis. And this is, you know, what it looks like, these, these uh, bacterial strains here. And Nikki had meningitis, um, which is uh, Neisseria meningitidis. And again, here are these little bacteria that are also in these chains, but they're the spherical form instead of the rod-shaped form. So how do you treat bacterial, usually, how do we treat bacterial infections? Well, it's with antibiotic treatments. And that's because these, these drugs are used, and what they do is they actually break down cell walls, cell membranes, and they basically make the bacteria you know, explode or rupture. And so therefore the bacteria cannot reproduce anymore and, and, and that's how you can you know, beat a bacterial infection. And it usually takes a couple days you know, for these uh, treatments to kind of take a hold of most of the bacteria there and, um, and then you start feeling better, right, if you do this in time.